Hello. Here are three things that I used to think were very healthy, but I believe were harming me. Number one is fish oil capsules. I tried all the best brands. I paid high prices for things like Nordic Naturals. And I know that there are a lot of good quality brands out there, but at the end of the day, there is so much research showing that fish oil supplements, capsules, oxidize in the blood and become rancid. That is something that I believe was hurting me and I also spent a lot of money on them. If you take fish oil capsules and you feel a significant improvement in your memory, your focus, your inflammation levels, I'm not gonna be the person to tell you you're doing it wrong. If you truly feel that it makes a difference, I think that's really good. However, again, the research over 10 plus years now shows that they are more likely to oxidize in the bloodstream. A better alternative, in my opinion, is eating your medicine because food is medicine. You could eat the wild caught salmon or you could consume grass fed lamb from Billy Doe Meats, which is richer in omega-3 and conjugated linoleic acid and stearic acid than wild caught salmon. It's delicious and it's getting all of your macro and micronutrients. It's high fat, it, you have the good quality amino acid profile, the protein, and then you've got all of your micronutrients. You have omega-3, conjugated linoleic acid, stearic acid. These things are anti-inflammatory and they're going to fuel you. You're gonna, you're gonna feel the difference when you consume something like Billy Doe Meats or any other high quality fatty ruminant animal. But lamb in particular is higher in omega-3 than wild caught salmon. You can Google it to confirm. I would highly encourage you to check out these studies about fish oils and oxidization. And that's all you have to search, fish oil oxidization. And you can come across so many studies so I just don't take them because it's cheaper and I already know a better alternative. The second thing is turmeric. Turmeric is known for being a superfood. It's known for these phytonutrients and providing antioxidants which protect us. It can cancel out the effects of free radicals, so to speak. But what I didn't know when I was eating turmeric like in bulk making turmeric tea and putting it on all of my food and staining my clothes with it on accident. I didn't know that it was one of the richest sources of oxalate. Oxalate is an anti-nutrient which binds to other nutrients in our body. It is what kidney stones are made out of. It's tiny little crystals that can literally embed themselves into every cell of your body. Oxalate can contribute to poor eye health. It can contribute to poor joint health. So like chronic pain, aches and pains, or even urinary tract infections. It can contribute to hypothyroidism. Oxalate is super damaging and it was one of the biggest threats for me. Everyone has a different threshold for how much oxalate they can handle, but for me, it was a deadly poison. It is poison to anybody, 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 but I wouldn't say that for everyone it's deadly. Everyone has a different threshold and I would definitely bargain that the state of your gut plays heavily into how much you can handle because I do fine with moderate oxalate now. I don't consume it every day, but I have a mindfulness. So the minimum effective dose of oxalate is around 35 milligrams and that is according to Sally Norton. She's like the pioneer of oxalate. Check her out, Sally Norton, um, N-O-R-T-O-N, Norton. She just came out with a new book. She's a genius. She's so wonderful. And she really played a role in opening up my eyes to these so-called superfoods that have benefits, so to speak, but they also come with a poison and no one's talking about that. Something else I want to point out is that some of these benefits that can possibly be found in these superfoods along with turmeric, such as spinach, cinnamon, black pepper, all of these are very high oxalate, but they're also known for their antioxidant properties. You don't even need to be clearing free radicals when you're not using glucose for fuel. So when you are primarily using glucose for fuel, that in itself creates oxidative stress in our bodies. When you are in ketosis, or at least cycling in and out of ketosis, and allowing your body to go through autophagy, that is anti-inflammatory, that is actually going to be the opposite of creating oxidative stress. So that's an efficient way to clear free radicals and to lower oxidative stress 
versus some of these foods that also come with a poison. So that's the alternative, is maybe focus on lifestyle and reducing oxidative stress and free radicals that way. And then also focus on, you know, the whole package. Like, it's not worth it. I got rid of all that stuff. I don't have turmeric or black pepper in my house. I do have cinnamon. I use it in small quantities. And now, like I said, I am mindful about it. If you are struggling with oxalate dumping, you might consider actually taking around 50 milligrams of oxalate to slow that dumping process if it's too extreme for you. Calcium and citric acid can bind to oxalate. So if I am consuming some cinnamon one day, I will be very mindful to consume maybe some lemon juice, or get some calcium by eating bones, which will help to bind to those oxalates and eliminate them from your body. I have a YouTube video on oxalates. It's called Oxalate 101. Check that out if you're more interested. But that is the second thing that I highly recommend you reconsider, and it's a so-called health food. The third thing is a gallon of water every day. So I see people walking around with these water bottles or gallons of water with little progressive encouragement notes to themselves, like you're almost there, halfway there, you can do it, keep it up, hydrate yourself. The problem is that we don't all need a gallon of water every day. I think that we're all probably focusing on drinking more water than we need. I think that half of your body weight in ounces is an appropriate amount to aim for, but keep in mind that your activity levels, how much you sweat, your, how much you're detoxing will play into this. And what matters more is your electrolytes and minerals. So our soil and our food is depleted from minerals. Unless you're eating seafood every day, I guarantee that you would benefit from supplementing with minerals. My number one favorite brand is Aussie Trace Minerals. My code is Taylor10 and I take them every day. I don't really drink flat water without adding minerals because my water is stripped of minerals and our ancestors and originally we would have had minerals in our water. And I also use Redmond Relight for my electrolytes. I do really well with high amounts of electrolytes, especially sodium. I prefer Redmond Relight to other brands because it has higher potassium and I feel best that way. Remember that water is not what hydrates you, it's the components of what water should be, which are electrolytes and minerals. So be sure that you're adding those in your water and maybe Consider that if you're drinking too much water, you will actually be diluting your electrolytes. So that could actually further dehydrate you. And I used to experience that all the time. So if you find yourself glugging and glugging water through the night or after a meal, and you're just never feeling uh, like your thirst is quenched, try adding some minerals. I am almost certain that you will feel better. There's a difference between adding electrolytes and adding minerals. Sometimes the electrolytes make me more thirsty because they're higher in sodium, which causes more thirst, but they definitely, definitely are needed for my focus, my energy, for everything. And with the minerals, that is, there's nothing as thir thirst quenching as those trace minerals uh, by Aussie Trace Minerals. And you don't need that much. It's more affordable than buying a cup of coffee at Starbucks every day. You don't need a gallon of water every day focus more on the minerals and electrolytes. So those are the three things that I used to waste my time and money on that I believe were hurting me. You might reconsider them. Again, I want to encourage you to think for yourself. These are just my recommendations. And if you truly feel like you're being benefited from turmeric or more water or fish oil capsules, then by all means, continue to be mindful and take note of how you feel. There can be benefits from turmeric but it's only a subset of people. And everyone is affected by oxalate, which is the anti-nutrient that's very high in turmeric. So I just wanna point these things out to help us to question, is this really helping me? Or is it just something that I heard over and over and over on the internet, on the radio, from my doctor, and I'm taking it and it makes me feel good because I get a thumbs up. Because that was me for a long time. And it really brought me to death's door. So removing the spinach, the turmeric, and removing the fish oil capsules, brought me to better health. It allowed me to open my eyes to what I really needed, that food is medicine. And when we look at what it looked like before humans manipulated our food and our water and everything else, it was much more simple. And it doesn't take that much, but you, you should look for high quality sources. Obviously buy what you can afford. If you can't afford the minerals, then maybe try to find spring waters. I know some people who actually go to a spring to get water to drink from the spring, and I think that's amazing. I would love to be able to do that, but the trace minerals are very convenient for me. I can take them traveling. Um, so find what works for you, and remember to think outside the box. 
I think that one. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. 